Tampa. That street flooding there nearly two inches of rain in Houston Saturday while parts of Tampa Bay got doused with three and a half inches. We've got a stalled front that's going to help trigger more thunderstorms for Houston while Elsa brings heavy rain to Tampa as we move through the week. So let's break it down for you because what is happening is an abundance of tropical moisture even out ahead of our next tropical system. So any one of these storms can put down some really heavy rain and that is what we're going to be seeing. So let's talk about where we've got the rain out there this morning. St. Augustine has been a soaking morning for you. We've got those showers beginning to build into the I-4 corridor. Cedar Key, you've had a steady stream of showers. Now, a lot of the heavier rain is just offshore over the Gulf, and that's where we have our front hanging out currently bobbles north and south, you'll start to see some of these showers and storms filling in there along and just south of that I-10 corridor. Apalachicola, you're getting some rain right now. And as we look at Texas, you can see the general trajectory here. We've got the showers moving kind of from that uh, uh, that 35 corridor down toward the 45 corridor. So Waco to Austin, you're going to run into some rain. San Antonio, a bit of a showery morning for you. And as this front continues to hang out in the same areas, well, it's going to continue to be the focal point for our showers and storms. We also have this abundant moisture in place and Elsa is going to help to transport even more of that moisture across Florida. So an increasing chance for rain and storms over the next couple days for many of the same areas that have been already seeing them. I'm sorry guys, you got to plan around it. The good news is it's not going to be a washout for your 4th of July, but there are going to be rounds of rain in your forecast, so you're going to have to plan accordingly. We don't fix it tomorrow either. We've still got showers and storms in the forecast, and this is for many areas that don't need any rain. By Tuesday, again, those showers and storms scattered across the Gulf Coast. And, you know, one of the things that's going to impact where we see most of these showers and storms, that is exactly where Elsa ends up tracking. One thing for sure, we do have the keys in the cone currently. And that's where we find our own Paul Goodlow. Paul, I have to admit, right now, I'm jealous of the weather you have. <laughs> Yeah, jealous, especially if you're under an umbrella. I'm not. I'm actually in the sun because it looks better on TV versus being in the shade, although it's much cooler in the shade. And even temperatures are taken in the shade. Again, a lot of the same places that saw rain yesterday. We'll see it again today. Much of the Gulf Coast, the I-10 corridor, some scattered storms from Houston through Jacksonville and Miami. But again, beautiful for places like Kansas City, Atlanta, D.C. As we look at the northern tier, it is a bit above average. Places like Minneapolis and Billings in the mid to upper 90s. So that is going to be feeling hot out there. Bald Eagle, Pennsylvania, your forecast for today. Upper 70s, you're falling into the upper 60s, but absolutely beautiful. You can't complain about that forecast right for your 4th of July. Freedom, Oklahoma, you'll be in the upper 80s, a mix of sun and clouds today, so the weather also looking wonderful. And Justice, West Virginia, again, we've got some beautiful looking forecasts for much of the country for your 4th of July. Lower 80s for your evening if you're making plans for the second part of your day. Well, much more ahead on weekend recharge. But for some of us, we're going to be dodging those raindrops. So let's break it down. Here's the thing. If you had rain in the forecast yesterday and storms, you'll likely have it today because our rain maker, that low pressure system spinning up here uh, near New England, now around Maine, and that stalled frontal boundary that's been hanging out around the Gulf Coast. Well, many of those are still in place. So a lot of the same places that saw some rain yesterday. Well, you have that in the forecast again today. A lot of the places that were beautiful yesterday under this pocket of high pressure from Atlanta, up through Memphis, St. Louis, you're going to have beautiful weather again today. We do have that risk for some severe thunderstorms as we look back toward the panhandle of Texas. Could have some gusty winds, maybe some hail with that as well. Now, in terms of temperatures, it's going to be very pleasant under that high pressure. We are going to see above average temperatures, though, as you look toward the northern tier, record highs possible for places like Bismarck and still very hot in the Pacific Northwest. Well, an intense scene spotted those passes of the Hurricane Hunter, some really valuable data coming out of that, of course. And uh, I think uh, as much as that we'd like to see that storm weakening, mm -hmm. it's still one of those things where you kind of hate to see it a little bit because then people start to let their guard down. And we still don't exactly know what we're going to have once this emerges north of Cuba. Right. And, or even before it gets to Cuba, there's some room for strengthening today, depending on the convective trends in its interior and how long they last. Felicia, that's a that we see out west, particularly this, this this time of year is you, you have the thunderstorms, but you still have some dry air in place as well. So sometimes you're not even getting that rain to reach the ground where you get the lightning strikes and then you get these uh, wildfires. So here's what we're looking at. The active wildfires currently 47. That is the wildfires greater than 100 acres. You can see there more than 600.
640,000 acres uh, within those active wildfires currently. Now the rainfall total forecast a little bit of that monsoonal rain going on across portions of the Four Corners region, but you'll notice especially where we really need it, California, uh, up through Oregon, Nevada, even western portions of Arizona, not getting that rain that we need in the next seven days. Here are some of the temperatures. Look at this. This just adds insult to injury, really. Triple digits in Salt Lake City. Uh, same thing in Vegas. As you look up toward Boise, nearing that 100 degree mark. Uh, 86 in Portland might not sound hot, but that is above average for this time of year. This has been a prolonged period of dangerous heat for this part of the country. The Pacific Northwest still seeing some of those heat advisories and excessive heat warnings as you look toward eastern Montana here. We've got widespread temperatures 10 to 20 degrees above average. And what the part of the problem is, is that it's been so hot for so long. And a lot of these homes here just do not have uh, central AC temperatures through the early part of the week in the 90s and hundreds once again. Our coverage of Tropical Storm Elsa continues. Meteorologist Paul Goodlow is live in hours. Weekend recharge rolls on. I'm Felicia Combs. Tropical Storm Elsa lashing parts of Cuba and Jamaica with rain and wind as it heads toward Florida. You can see that here. Our Paul Goodlow is live in Key West. We're going to get to him in just a minute. But first, let's get a look at the latest on Elsa because all eyes on this storm at this moment, of course, bringing those in. And now absolutely lashing Jamaica and beginning to feel those impacts as we look toward the eastern portions of Cuba, the western portions of Hispaniola, Haiti really feeling those impacts. Currently winds at 65 miles per hour, so that is tropical storm status, about 45 miles east northeast of Kingston, Jamaica. Now you'll notice there that uh, it's certainly not a well organized looking storm. It's not what you think of when you typically think that textbook tropical storm, but it is still uh, posing a lot of threats. We're talking about heavy rain could bring to lead uh, to mudslides and landslides as well. Power outages, of course, flat, uh, flooding is going to be an issue, especially as this has slowed down quite a bit. You can see the cone here by Tuesday early morning there emerging toward the um, toward the keys and then moving across the state of Florida as we head through Wednesday. We've got tropical storm watches and tropical storm warnings in place across portions of Cuba and Jamaica and even portions of Haiti as well. So Dr. Postel, there is still a wait and see game that we've got going on here. It's largely going to depend on how this storm emerges intact or not intact as it, uh, it becomes north 